and his love endures forever. Amen. Blessed day, church. Welcome to our Living with a Purpose series. And now as we have the message, let's open this with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this another beautiful day where we can gather together and study your word. And Lord, help us, Lord God, to 
meditate upon it, Lord God. We may reflect upon it and apply it in our personal life, Lord God. Not just to have a stock of knowledge or understanding, but applied truth, Lord God, so that we may continue to become more like Jesus day by day. So, Father, have your way now. And Holy Spirit, we acknowledge that you are our greatest teacher today. So, take over in this message of yours. And we are here ready to receive your word. This is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, today we are now in our subpart two. You were planned for God's pleasure under the Living Your Calling, Live Out Your Calling series that we have through the Purpose Driven Life by Pastor Rick Warren. And today we will be discovering the subpart two, number four of this message. Now, in this Purpose Driven Life journey that we have, we are discovering the five major calling that God has set for us from the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. Now, we are unlocking and we are now in the part four in discovering worship. What is worship? How are we going to do worship as a lifestyle? And last Sunday, we talked about the heart of worship and we discovered that the heart of worship is surrender today. Now that we already discovered and learned how to surrender our lives to God, it's time to build up an intimate relationship with God. And that's how we're going to become best friends with God. So beloved, today we will be discovering becoming best friends with God. In Romans chapter 5 verse 10, the word of God says, Since we were restored to friendship with God by the death of His Son, while we were still His enemies, we will certainly be delivered from eternal punishment by His life. So if we look at our previous life, here comes us and God. We are like enemies because of the sinfulness that we have, because we are not perfect and we fall short in the glory of God. But we praise and thank God that's how the gospel works in our life because God and us, Jesus mediate that, that hindrance, Jesus mediate that gap so that we can have that personal relationship again with God and enjoy a beautiful relationship, a meaningful relationship with Him. Jesus paid the price. And that's the beauty of the access of that relationship with Him. Beloved, remember this. God wants to be your best friend because of Jesus Christ. That's why He gave His one and only Son to die for you and me. And the moment that we believe, the moment that we receive, the moment that we say with all our faith and confess with our mouth that Jesus is my Lord and Savior, during that time, we built up in that relationship back with God. Beloved, your relationship to God has many different aspects. Like God is your creator and maker, Lord and Master, Judge, Redeemer, Father, Savior, and much more. Now, but the most shocking truth is this. Almighty God yearns and longs to be your best friend. Not only friend, but best friend. If you look at again in Eden, we see God's ideal relationship with us. Like Adam and Eve enjoyed an intimate friendship with God. There were no rituals during that time, no ceremonies, no re even religions. Just a simple loving relationship between God and the people He created. Unhindered by guilt, unhindered with fear, Adam and Eve delighted in God and He delighted in them. We were made to live in God's continual presence, but after the fall, that ideal relationship was lost. We, we look at when we fall short. And only a few people in the Old Testament times had the privilege of friendship with God. Moses and Abraham were called friends of God. David was called a man after God's own heart. And Job, Enoch, and Noah had intimate friendship with God. But fear of God, not friendship, was more common in the Old Testament. The fear to be punished, to be cursed, and all those things. So, if you look at friendship, it's not really that kind of relationship that the Old Testament people have with God. It's more on fear. But some few have that wonderful and intimate relationship with God. Then, if we will jump to the New Testament, then Jesus changed the situation. When He paid for our sins on the cross, the veil in the temple, have you remembered that? When Jesus said, it is finished, and the veil was torn, you know, the veil in the temple that symbolizes the separation of the people of God and with God was split from the top to bottom indicating that direct access that God was once again available for us 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So unlike the Old Testament priests who had the to spend hours preparing to meet Him, we can now approach God anytime 24-7. That's the beauty of that personal relationship that we have with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So beloved, it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 11, Now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us in making us friends with God. Now, always remember this. I want you to really take this. The importance of Jesus Christ in the relationship that we have with God. That because of His sacrificial death, because of His shed blood on that cross and offering His own body for us to be reunited again with God. That's, that's what it says here. Now, we can rejoice. What's the reason why we can now rejoice in the presence of God? Because of Jesus. In our wonderful new relationship with God, not that master and slave kind of relationship, but that friendship with God because of Jesus. Beloved, friendship with God is possible only because of the grace of God and the sacrifice of Jesus. All this is done by God, who through Christ changed us from enemies into friends. The old hymn says, What a friend we have in Jesus. But actually, God invites us to enjoy friendship and fellowship with all three persons of the Trinity, our Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. That is why it says in John 15, 15, I no longer call you a servant. Jesus said this, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you what? Look at the text. It says, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. It's like a best friend kind of relationship. Now notice this. The word for friend in this verse, in John 15, 15, does not mean a casual acquaintance, but a close, trusted relationship. It means in this relationship we have, we have with Jesus, Jesus trusted us. Jesus is, you know, lacking us with a closeness and He trusted us in this relationship that we have. Now remember that the same word is used to refer, this word friend here is the same word being referred to, for example, in a wedding, like the best man, like the king's inner circle of intimate, trusted friends. In royal court, servant must keep their distance from the king. But the inner circle of trusted friends enjoy close contact, direct access, and confidential information because of that relationship. Before, we have the kind of mentality that we are servant we are, and God is our king, but because of Jesus, God gave us the direct access to have the close contact with God, to have that direct access with God. There's no other mediator. It's only Jesus Christ. He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. And now, we can enjoy an intimate relationship with Him. Beloved, always remember that God deeply desires that we know Him intimately. Not just a God to be worshipped, not just a God to, to do a lot of rituals, in a religious ritual, spiritual rituals, but God's first ever design for you and me and God's first purpose for you and me is not actually serving or doing good things for Him but it's about enjoying an intimate relationship with Him. That's why we are studying the very first purpose that we need to unlock in this discovering God's purposes for our life is worship. Because in worship, there we discover it's beyond doing, but it's about the being part of us, enjoying an intimate relationship with Him. If we look at Acts chapter 17, verses 26 to 27, the Word of God says, he made the entire human race and made the earth hospitable with plenty of time and space for living so we could seek after God and not just grope around in the dark but actually find Him. Wow! It means that there's plenty of time, plenty of space, plenty of chances, plenty of seasons that God is pouring out to all of us so that we can know Him. We could seek after Him. We call it in the missional community, Kairos Moments, 
where there are some moments in our life where God is speaking to us through circumstances. It might be uh, a victorious season or circumstances or it might be a down and a struggling season in life. And during that time, God wants us to seek Him. God wants us to develop the trust and that relationship, that intimacy that can only be found in Jesus Christ by believing, receiving, and trusting Him and surrendering our lives. That is why, beloved, I hope that in whatever season you are in right now, God is reminding all of us, God deeply desires, He always think about you daily, that you and I will come to God and decide one day that we will commit to, an, in, to grow deeper in an intimate relationship with Him. Beloved, always remember that knowing and loving God is our greatest privilege. And being known and loved is God's greatest pleasure. What a beautiful confirmation, beloved. You know, that's why we always say, you know, Christianity, the journey with Jesus is not boring. It is full of color. It is full of intimacy. It is full of love and joy. Look at this. Knowing and loving God is our greatest privilege as His children. And being known by God and being loved by God is our greatest pleasure. Yes, this world might offer us many kinds of pleasures from money, material possession, hobbies and sports, position in the workplace, even ministry, even the good life and the healthy life that we have. The world can offer all this kind of pleasure that we can enjoy, but always remember this, the greatest pleasure you could ever imagine and experience in life is, be, be, is knowing, being known and loved by God. That's your greatest pleasure. That's the greatest thing that we could ever have in our life. And that's the greatest pleasure and treasure for us. It says in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24, If anyone to boast, they should boast that they know and understand me. The greatest boasting that we could ever have is about Jesus. These are the things that please me. It means that in our life, beloved, knowing and loving God is our greatest privilege. And being known and being loved by Him is our greatest pleasure. Beloved, God says that it's difficult to imagine how an intimate friendship is possible between an omnipotent, invisible, perfect God and finite, sinful man being. It's easier to understand a master-servant relationship, right? Or a creator-creation relationship. Or even father and child. It's so easy to understand what's the relationship between both. But what it means when God wants us a friend, as a friend, as a best friend, as a close friend, as a barkada. By looking at the lives of God's friends in the Bible, let's discover this. How to build intimate friendship with God. In this journey that we have, this week and next week, we will be discovering six foundations in building intimate friendship with God. We'll be discovering the first two today, and next week, it's going to be the next four foundations in building intimate friendship with God. Let me ask you this question before we proceed. How are you with your personal relationship with God lately? Have you developed, can you feel the intensity of love growing day by day? Or you feel like you're drifting away? You feel like your relationship with God becomes cold or boring? How's your personal relationship with Him at this very moment? How's your connection with God? Beloved, if you are in the season where you're struggling in growing deeper and intimate with God, I hope that you will find this message to become a reminder and a guide to help you grow deeper in your intimacy with Him. If you're already fired up every day in your devotion, in your journaling, in your spiritual discipline, and in serving the Lord and obeying His call, if you are at that season right now, I hope and pray that this will add on to that confirmation and affirmation of your calling and the things that you're doing. So today, beloved, let's discover two of the six foundations in building an intimate friendship with God. So let's dig in. Number one, beloved, is this, how to build intimate friendship with God. Number one is through constant conversation. Even as human as we are, if you want to build to someone who is new to you in your relationship, all you need to do is constant conversation. Today, we, are, we have social media. We can meet up in a coffee shop. We can chat. We can video call. There are so many ways that we can have communication to the people that we long to be close with. And one of the key, beloved, in, in any kind of relationship, 
constant conversation is very, very important. It's important between us and God, and it's important for us with other people. Now, you will never grow a close relationship with God by just attending church once a week, like worship service or Sunday service, or even having daily quiet time. Remember this, friendship with God is built by sharing all your life experiences with Him. It's good to have like 30 minutes devotion, 10 minutes devotion, 8 minutes devotion, 5 minutes. Those are really good spiritual discipline for your feeding of your soul, mind, will, emotion, and in the Word of God, being soaked with Him. But God's desire for you is not just to have a check of to-do list that every day you're doing your daily devotion, that every day you pray for your request, that every day you sing a worship song, that once a week you go to church. Beloved, God wants you to build an intimate relationship with Him in whatever areas and whatever you're doing 24-7. Now, let me ask you this question. For those young professionals who have boyfriend and girlfriend, or even for those who are, have families, especially LDR, they are not here in, in Dumaguete, or you are not with them occasionally, you just have time together. Diba? One of the things that we do is we constantly communicate. Have you taken your lunch? Have you taken everything okay? Is, it, is everything okay? We always chat. We always have you know, a chat group. It's easy for us to in a snap. For those people that you want to, 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 to be with, even though you're not you know, in a physical form, you want to have that social media to get connected, like Facebook Messenger or Viber or text messages or video call. Because you want to have constant that sometimes, even at work, we're chatting them. Even when we are in our business travel, we chat them and we share our food, our view, our activities with them. Why? Because you want to build that relationship. Beloved, it's also the same with God. God wants you. You don't need social media with God. All you need is your personal, spiritual connection and your whole heart towards Him. He wants to be part in every conversation you have with other people. He wants to be part in every decision and plans you make every day. Even the simplest to the hardest and to, to the most complex kind of decision and plans that you have. From a decision making for your business, for your work, for your career, for your ministry, for your future plan. God wants you to take Him in. God wants to have conversation with you as you go along with that process or that journey that you have. Of course, it is important to establish the habit of daily devotion with God, but He wants more than appointment in your schedule. Always remember that, beloved. He wants to be included in every activity, in every conversation, in every problem, in every thought, in every victories. You can carry on a continuous open-ended conversation with Him throughout your day, talking with Him about whatever you are doing or thinking at that moment. Remember this. That's what it means praying without ceasing. Remember that it means conversing with God while shopping, driving, working, or performing any other everyday task. Beloved, I hope that starting today, we can break that kind of mindset that after we pray, we're done with God. After you say, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So continue the conversation. After you said, I'm done with my personal daily quiet time with God, then continue to keep up with your conversation with God. That's how to develop that constant conversation with Him. Now, beloved, as we go deeper upon this, there are two things that we need to do as an example as well for us, how to build up that constant conversation. So, beloved, number one is this, turning most commonplace and menial tasks into acts of praise and communion with God. Now, notice this, turning most commonplace and menial tasks. What are the commonplace? Like, where you, where, you, where you have your duty at work, where you go for a stopover for snacks or lunch or meal. Um, menial tasks like everyday dishwashing or washing your clothes, sweeping the floor, or reporting to your duty or the ministry. So doing all those and then turning or converting those things into what? Praise and communion with God. Beloved, Ephesians 4, 6, it says, He rules everything and is everywhere and is in everything. You cannot just put God in your room because that's the place where you meet with God in your devotional. 
you cannot just leave God in your worship center because that, 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 that is the place where you can worship Him every Sunday. But every day, He is everything. He rules everything. Your time, your health, your work, your business, your ministry is everywhere. Wherever you go, He is there. He is omnipresent and is in everything. What does it mean? He is in everything, even in your cup of coffee. He is with you. So you cannot actually escape in God's presence. So all you need to do, turn those commonplace and menial tasks to become what? A praise and a communion with God. Beloved, the common misconception is that spending time with God means being alone with God. But that is only a fraction of your waking hours. Everything you do can be spending time with God. If He is invited to be a part of it, and you stay aware of His presence. So, the most important thing here, beloved, is this. You are aware. First, you invite God. God, be with me as I drive. God, be with me as I play my sport. God, be with me as I conduct the meeting. And during that time you're doing all those stuff, you are aware of His presence. You know, the classic book of learning how to develop a constant conversation with God is practicing the presence of God. It is written in the 17th century by Brother Lawrence, a humble cook in a French monastery. Brother Lawrence was able to turn even the most commonplace and menial tasks like preparing meals and washing dishes into acts of praise and communion with God. The key to friendship with God, he said, is not changing what you do. Remember this, the, the, the key to friendship or in building intimate relationship with God, he said this, is not changing what you do, but changing your attitude toward what you do. What you normally do for yourself, you begin doing for God, not only for you. Whether it is eating, bathing, working, relaxing, or taking out the trash, you change your attitude, you change your heart and focus instead of yours, instead of your heart, instead of your own self, then you shift the focus towards God. Today, we often feel we must get away from our daily routine in order to worship God. But that is only because we haven't learned to practice His presence all the time. Brother Lawrence found it easy to worship God through the common tasks of life. He didn't have to go away for special spiritual retreats. Yes, we all know that solitude, spiritual retreat, these are all good supplements in our building, our rootedness in the Lord. But the more you do normal tasks, menial tasks with the Lord, will help you increase your awareness and building an intimate relationship with Him like a best friend. Again, very concrete example for us, cell phone. You bring your cell phone at work, you bring your cell phone when you're studying, you bring your cell phone when you worship, and even sometimes when you listen to sermon, you know, in your screen, there are some pops up of the messenger. And sometimes we can, we're tempted even to, uh, you know, check those messages and reply to those messages, even when we're hearing a sermon. It means... God wants it to be converted in His presence that in wherever you are, you're studying, you're meeting, you're having family time, God wants to be involved in that. That's how to start turning most commonplace and menial tasks into acts of praise and communion with God. So beloved, let me ask you that question. How are you going to turn your commonplace, menial tasks, routines every day to be aware? How are you going to do it? I hope that you have an action step that starting today, in whatever you're doing, you've got to be aware of God's presence. Amen? So the second one, beloved, is this. Constant conversation. Um, this is tip number one. Tip number two. Let's go. So the second one is praying shorter conversational prayers continually through the day rather than trying to pray long sessions of complex prayer every day. Beloved, it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Wow. Rejoice always, and I want you to focus on this, two words, pray continually. It doesn't say how much time you need, how many minutes and seconds you need, but pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Another of Brother Lawrence's helpful ideas was to pray shorter conversational prayers continually through the day 
rather than trying to pray long session of complex prayer. To maintain focus and counteract wandering thoughts, he said, I do not advise you to use great multiplicity of words in prayer, since long discourses are often the occasion for wandering. In an age of attention deficit, this 450-year-old suggestion to keep it simple seems to be particularly relevant. The Bible tells us to pray all the time. How is it possible to do this? One way is to use what we call breath prayers through the day. So as many Christians have done for centuries, you choose a brief sentence. You might be asking, what is that breath prayer? So just choose like simple sentence or simple phrases that can be repeated to Jesus in one breath. For example, one breath prayer. You are with me. Another one. I receive your grace, Lord. Diba? That's just one breath. Another one. I'm depending on you, Jesus. Another one. I want to know you more, God. Another example. I belong to you, Abba Father. Another one. Lord, help me trust you. Those are examples of one breath prayer. Imagine if every hour you can have that kind of routine that in every hour you can just have one breath prayer or probably every hour, okay? So 9 o'clock in the morning, you have one breath prayer. I need you, God. Number, uh, at 10 o'clock, maybe you sh from, from meeting to lunchtime or brunch time, maybe thank you, God, for the food. Maybe you're back to your, to, to your work. Guide me, Lord. So if you have that kind of routine, at first, it might be you must be intentional you, probably you can have some reminders in your phone or probably an alarm to beep to remind you. But if it will become normal to you every day, you have that beautiful, intimate relationship with God. You can also use short phrases of Scripture. For example, for me to, li to live is Christ. Or another one, you will never leave me. Another one, you are my God. So pray it as often as possible so it is rooted deep in your heart. Just be sure that your motive is to honor God, not to control God in your prayers. So practicing the presence of God is a skill, a habit that you can develop. Just as a musician practice scale, uh, scales every day in order to play beautiful music with ease, you must force yourself or you need to be intentional to think about God at different times in your day. You must train your mind to remember God. That's why Romans 12, 1, you got to renew. Or Romans 12, 1 and 2, offer yourself and renew your mind. At first, you will need to create reminders to regularly bring your thoughts back into awareness that God is with you in that moment. Begin by placing visual reminders around you, maybe in your desk, maybe in your room. You might post little notes that say, God is with me and for me right now. Benedictine monks use the hourly chimes of a clock. Have you noticed that? Old clocks, every hour there's a ting, ting. So for them before, it is actually a reminder. Every hour clock means one short breath prayer. So the, they call it the hour prayer. So if you have a watch or a cell phone with an alarm, why not just every hour? Whole, whole day, alarm, time to pray, breath prayer. Then you can also type in your alarm, title of the alarm, I need you, Lord, by 9 o'clock. By 10 o'clock, Lord, guide me. Then every time you hear the alarm or vibrate it, so you can pray the breath prayer. That's one practical way in starting and building prayer, shorter conversation in your everyday routine. So, beloved, if you have a watch, you can do that. Remember, sometimes you will sense God's presence other times you won't. So you don't need to really expect much every hour or every moment you pray, but just develop that habit. God is training you. God wants you to put your faith even bigger this time, that you will be confident that He is with you day by day, and for sure you can experience His presence. So beloved, I want you to be reminded with this. We don't praise God to feel good, but to do good. Your goal is not a feeling, but a continual awareness of the reality that God is always present. That is the lifestyle of worship. Being aware of the reality that God is always present in your life. For others, they're so longing for that Sunday thing of one and a half hour. 
But Monday to Saturday, they're not longing for God. That is just what we call religiosity. When we always focus on the ritual because they're in that ritual, in that service, there is a mix of emotion. We can sing songs and praise. But Monday to Saturday, the heart is being bent out and far away from the Lord. That is why, beloved, it is not the worship service that is at the central focus. If you want to build intimate relationship with Him, Yes, it can help us to be together, to inspire one another, but that's just a small fraction of the reality in how to build up an intimate relationship with God. You should bring God every hour, every moment in your life. Again, even the journaling is good, devotion is good, but that's just a piece of minutes or hours in a day. But you've got to bring your constant conversation with, the, with your Savior, with your Lord, with the one who loves you, with the one who forgives you if you want a continuous awareness of His presence in your life. Beloved, if you are seeking an experience of His presence through all of this, you have missed the point. We don't praise God to feel good, but to do good. Okay? And remember, your goal is not a feeling, but a continual awareness of His presence in your life. So, the second tip that we need to do in terms of um, how to build the, the, the habit that we need to have, the first is through continual conversation with God, the second one, beloved, is this. So, the through continual meditation of His Scripture. So, a second way to establish a friendship with God is by thinking about His Word throughout your day. So, imagine that. Thinking of His Word throughout the day. So, this is called meditation. And the Bible repeatedly urges us to meditate on how God, who God is, what He has done, and what He has said for you and me. So remember that it is impossible to be God's friend. Notice this. It is impossible to have close relationship with God if ourselves is apart from knowing what He says. You can't love God unless you know Him. And you can't know Him without knowing His Word. That's why a lot of people say, I want to love God. I want to develop relationship with Him. But if you don't have the discipline of His Word, kahit eight minutes lang every day, if you don't have that, then surely you will not build up and you will have a lot of spiritual frustration that you can feel if you will not work it out in your life. You know, the Bible says God revealed Himself to Samuel through His Word. It means not only through emotion, not supernatural, but the, the very basic and strong foundation of encountering God and revealing God's plan and His presence in your life is through His Word. Because He is the Word, John chapter 1. God still uses the method today. While you cannot spend all day studying the Bible, you can think about it throughout the day, recalling verses you have read or memorized and mulling them over in your mind. So repetitions in your mind. Meditation is often misunderstood as some difficult, mysterious ritual practice by isolated monks and mystics. But remember this, Meditation of the scripture is simply focused thinking, a skill anyone can learn and use anywhere. So, beloved, God is giving us a great reminder all of us can meditate. Now, I believe all of us have experienced having crush before, right? Especially your first crush. Now, let me ask you that question. Do you still know the name of your first crush? Now, what's the experience you have during that time? Maybe during that time, you have your first crush that even at the plate, you can see her or his face. Or maybe through the people that surrounds you. And then you keep on thinking and sometimes even fantasizing that you're walking together, holding hands and doing things a lot. And, you know, you're loving one another. So that's what we call meditation. It means you keep on thinking and thinking and thinking. And even sometimes drawing stories in your, in your, in your head and in your heart. That's what it means to meditate. That's why God is giving us this reminder that you and I actually knows how to meditate. Especially if you're so inspired with your wife, especially during the time that you're planning for your wedding, or maybe at the time that you're, maybe tomorrow is your wedding, so you're so excited, you keep on meditating upon what will happen tomorrow, how, how I'm gonna share my vows to my spouse. And the excitement is there and the thinking will never stop. It is always have the rush in your heart. So it's also the same with meditating the scripture. All we need to do, we will transfer our focus to the word of God. Beloved, remember that when you think about a problem over and over in your mind, that's called what? It's called worry. 
Now, when you think about God's Word over and over in your mind, that's what we call meditation. Okay? So I know all of us knew how to worry. Keep on recalling some um, bills to pay. We have this kind of two uh, names that tips on um, giving us that um, worry in mind. The two names of Judith and Jonah. Right? In Filipino, Judith na. Okay? So Judith is there and you need to pay or else tomorrow is Jew na. So Jew na ngayon. Jew na today. So if you will not pay it, so there might be an interest or a penalty. So it's going to be some hardship in your finances. So that's one way that if every time we think about the due date of our, of our responsibilities, and especially if June not today, and then we still don't have the money, of course, you will always be having that worry in your heart. But, beloved, the good thing is this. When you think about God's Word, if you know how to worry, now let's discover how to meditate God's Word. When you think about God's Word over and over in your mind, that's what we call meditation. If you know how to worry, then surely you already know how to meditate. You just need to switch your attention from your problems to the Bible verses. Remember that the more you meditate on God's Word, the less you will have to worry about. Beloved, the reason God considered Job and David his close friend was that they valued His Word above everything else. So, and they thought about it continually throughout the day. So, I encourage you, starting today, meditate upon the Word of God. You might not memorize everything. For example, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Okay? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean in your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. What if you cannot really uh, uh, memorize the entire ver two verses? So what to do? Just grasp one phrase of the entire verse. What is the common? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then just meditate upon it every day, every hour of the day. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. While you are driving, when you're at work, trust in the Lord with all your heart. When you're eating your lunch, trust in the Lord with all your heart. While having your coffee break in the afternoon, trust in the Lord with all your heart. While driving going home, trust in the Lord with all your heart. While cooking for dinner, trust in the Lord with all your heart. While washing the dishes, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then when you're sleeping, resting, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Beloved, if you do this, it will change the way you think and respond to situations. There will be peace, confidence, and the power of the promises of God in your life. So again, you don't need to memorize the entire thing. Just get the thought. Just get the, the meat upon that verse. Example, John 3.16 for God so loved the world. You can say, God loves me. And meditate upon it. God loves me. God, I'm part of the world. God loves me. God loves me. Throughout the day, it will change your mind. It will change your perspective. So if you feel right now that you're so full of a lot of challenges and testings in life, I want to encourage you. Daily, converse with God. Every hour, breath prayers. And every hour, also add it on. What is that one phrase from a scripture that you can declare throughout the day? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay? So I hope that you can get that. Then part of meditation, I want to add something. Okay? So that we, can, we, will, we will surely know how to follow Jesus every day. So if you are meditating God's word every day, for example, John, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, and you get that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now, I want you to ask these two questions as you live out that meditation in the whole day. So, what to do? Two questions to ask as you meditate God's Word. So, for example, trust in the Lord with all your heart. So, what God is telling me? God is telling me, trust me, my son, and meditate upon it. And then, what does God want me to do? In all uncontrollable situation or events or activities today, I need to be rested in Him. So, just bring it on the whole day. For sure, the enemy cannot attack your mind, cannot attack your emotion, cannot attack your will, and you will be stay sharp and focused, and surely, you'll become productive in your daily living. So, beloved, I hope that you can live it out starting today. In Job chapter 23, verse 12, it says, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. In Psalms 119, it also says, 
Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about them. You know, in Job chapter 23, verse 12, Job here is declaring that the words of God is like the bread of life. If you look at again, David said in Psalms 119, verse 97, they are constantly in the thoughts of David, and David cannot stop thinking about this. The word of God, the promises of God, God's goodness, who God is. You know, friends share secrets, and God will share His secrets with you if you develop the habit of thinking about His word throughout the day. God told Abraham His secrets, and He did the same with Daniel, and did the same with Paul, the disciples, and other friends. So, when you read your Bible or hear a sermon, don't just forget it and walk away. Develop the practice of reviewing the truth in your mind, thinking about it over and over again. The more time you spend reviewing what God has said, the more you will understand the secrets of this life that most people miss. The Bible says in Psalms 25 verse 14, friendship with God is reserved for those who, who reverence Him. With, the, with them alone, he shares the secrets of his promises. So beloved, I hope that starting today, we can continue to build up that two important practical applications we have. Daily constant conversation and daily meditation of the word. Remember, next week we'll be discovering the other four foundations in how to build an intimate relationship with God. Let's just end it and stop it there right now and let's just reflect upon it. What is the symbol? Diba? Like telephone or cell phone, right? So this symbol, I hope that today, this is going to be a great reminder. If you want to build up an intimate relationship with God, first, you need to have what? The skill of hearing Him through meditating God's Word. And then the skill of listening and the skill of telling your story sharing your prayers, daily conversation, and daily meditating to hear God's Word, and daily conversation through prayers. So beloved, I hope that all of us learn something today in this message, and let's apply it. Now, let me ask you that question. What God is telling you right now? And what does God want you to do in application of the Scripture? So starting today, beloved, by practicing constant conversation with God and continual meditation on His Word, prayer lets you speak to God. Meditation lets God speak to you. Both are essential to becoming a friend of God. So for our D-group discussion question, this is the point to ponder. God wants to be my best friend. And the verse to remember, friendship with God is reserved for those who reverence Him. And the question to consider is this. What can I do to remind myself to think about God and talk to Him more often throughout the day? What are the steps? What are the ways that you can do? For me, personally, I, I can put it an alarm from 6 o'clock in the morning down to 10 or 11 at night. And every day, I will also input. In every alarm in your cell phone, there's a title, right? So the title might be my prayer, my one breath prayer, I will, I will add some notes of the verse that I will be meditating because I'm always bringing my phone. So therefore, I will use it as a tool to remind me. That's my practical application. How about you? What is your application? Can you please share it with your group? And I pray that through your small group time, your D group time, in your missional community, you can also encourage one another, pray for one another's burden, and share your victory with one another and dig in in studying God's Word. As we close, let us close in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for this beautiful day that you've given us, Lord. And thank you, God, for just giving us this wonderful truth, how important it is to really listen to you through your Word and how to, to express our thanksgiving, our confession, our supplication, our adoration to you through prayer. Lord, thank you for giving us this reminder that Communicating with you is not actually a burdensome, but there's so much freedom that we can connect with you 24-7. Thank you, God, for the blessed opportunity and access. Thank you, Jesus, for 
dying for us. And now we enjoy this presence, this, the presence of God throughout whole day, 24-7. And Holy Spirit, thank you for being there to remind us and to convict us. And Lord, we want to be more like Jesus. So have your way. We're so excited for your work in our lives. Bless our time together now. This all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us, beloved. And see you next week. And God bless. Stay strong and stay focused in following Jesus always. Hello, brothers and sisters. For our Titan offering, you can scan the QR codes on the screen or you may contact our finance officer, Ms. Eva Lucero, through this number, 099-5080-1107. Now, brothers and sisters, let us have a short reflection for our Titan offering entitled, Is God First or Last? And this is taken from Exodus chapter 22, verse 29 to 30. Allow me to read it. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors. The firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. Likewise shalt thou do with thine oxen and with thy sheep. Seven days it shall be with his dam. On the eighth day, thou shalt give it to me. The ceremonial law of the Old Testament may not be binding on the New Testament believers, but the Old Canon is a wonderful place to observe the mind of God. His intentions and ways of thinking are so clearly set before us there. One thing we learn from this and other Old Testament verses is is that God wants the first and the best in our offerings. He isn't interested in receiving our leftovers, our cast-offs, and things we don't want. In a manner of speaking, He doesn't want us to throw Him a bone as if He were an old dog. When we plan our givings, do we give God the first and the best? Or do we convince ourselves that we do better in our giving someday, when our finances are in better shape? Which end of the budget does God occupy? The bottom end, where we graciously throw Him a few leftover scraps? If there are any, or does he occupy the top end of our budget, where we pay him first and give him the best we can? Where is God in your budget, first or last? Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us give as those who would not resign God to last place in the family budget. Allow us to pray. Let us bow down our heads. Father, thank you, Lord, for reminding us. Hallelujah, Lord that you should come first in our lives, Lord, that you must be our focus, Lord Father. Lord Father, thank you for today's word. And we pray, O Lord Father, as our brothers and sisters give, O Lord, may we be reminded that you are first in our lives. May we be reminded, O Lord Father God, that you are the top of our list. You are our priority. Thank you, Lord, for this reminder. And O Lord, may you bless my brothers and sisters, O Lord, as they give their tithes and offerings, O Lord, Father God, for your kingdom's glory, for your kingdom's work, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.